if you only had one minute to give artists the best music marketing advice you could possibly give them, what would you say? One minute on the clock. Sorry now. It's amazing to see it start start paying off on this side of things. I think that's a big thing that I would tell people is like mm -hmm. to find people that you like to work with. We also like are really fortunate and like we work really well together and we are very comfortable enough to be like that's not good enough. Yeah. You look at the credits on like the top forty songs right now, like they're almost all multiple yeah. writers, you know, because like that is you sort of need other people to like help you out and make things better and push you to be better. I would say post your music across all platforms every single day. Doesn't matter if you're tired of it. Doesn't matter about anything. Post it every single day. Yeah, and it only needs to be like a 20 second clip. It's not that hard to do. You can batch the content, but you just need to automate post it. it. You yeah, you can automate, automate the posting, but it needs to happen every single day. And eventually, once you've sort of been like, is anything going to happen? That's when it'll like start to happen. And you'll be like, oh, thank God I was doing this for so long. And it's... make your content better every single time. Try to make it better than the last one you made every single time. Yeah. Okay, what's another one? If you have a tiny bit of cash, you want to go to Andrew Southworth. <laughs> and you want, you want him to set up a Facebook ad for you because... Ooh! You could spend ten dollars a day and be like getting multiple fans by targeting the right kind of like similar music and similar genres, and you're really making like real fans that way, and people who never would find you any other way. Yeah, that's true. Well, had the audio on. Perfect timing. <laughs> Got the one minute mark. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you guys have some pretty awesome metrics that on on like your public facing Spotify stuff and all that, but. You also have some awesome songwriting credits that we're definitely going to be covering here in the whole world of songwriting and, and how the back-end side of that works as well, as much as you can share. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I guess let's start off with kind of your numbers, I guess. Like on, on Spotify, Tia, you have half a million people, <laughs> monthly listeners specifically, which is kind of nuts. I think last time <laughs> we talked, you were at like 350 or something, so... <laughs> Yeah. You've gone up quite a bit in the last last little bit. Um, and together, you're Beach Crimes. And that project has also a respectable number, 194,000 monthly listeners. So, like, you two combined are, like, 700,000 listeners. <laughs> Let's so, go. That's um, crazy. <laughs> if, uh, if you could kind of maybe give a little one-minute introduction or so of, like, who you are, what you do, and all that in your own words. Yeah. Um, you want to go first? Uh, yeah, I mean... <clears throat> we're we're both uh, we've both been full time songwriter producers for the last uh, five to eight years, and um, you know we've written, we've been fortunate enough to write for tons of different artists. And Ryan wrote "Shut Up and Dance" <laughs> and has cuts with Halsey, BB Rexa, oh. Sabrina Carpenter that we did together, and Hi. Chain Smokers. Yeah, and no so, big deal. Like one of the biggest songs on on the earth right now. No big deal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we've been re really lucky to do that, and uh, and but I think last year we we just kind of were were feeling like we really wanted to be putting out our own music and do it consistently, and we did a lot of research into just like how things how the world's kind of going with you know music marketing and posting on social media and. And uh, and just thinking about like what we would want our music to sound like as Tia Tia and as together as Beach Crimes, and we kind of landed on some some interesting ideas, and we were like, you know what, like we are lucky enough to be able to be like, let's just go all in on this in January, which was you know six months ago, seven months ago, and just go all in, no more writing for other people for this year, and let's just like. 100% right for us and it's been like the most yeah. we've ever worked but sure. it's yeah. it's also been the most rewarding and like you know we, we kind of were focusing on this whole year just putting our heads down and like not thinking about any sort of metrics or how things were going and just expecting like at the end of the year maybe we'd have a little bit of traction going and I feel like half we're like halfway through now and and we've kind of exceeded our own expectations. So we're, you know, it's just encouraging us to like keep going and that we're on the right path. And, you know, we're, we're still working every day, all day. Yeah. And it's, uh, yeah. It, it's amazing to see it start, start paying off on this side of things. Cause we've been, you know, behind the scenes for so long and now we're kind of like much more front facing and, 
and, you know, doing a lot of the artist side of stuff, which is like posting content and being, you know, like, yeah, front facing public people for the last like seven months, which has been, which has been fun. Yeah. So I'm Tia Tia <laughs> and wait, did you want that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Whatever, you want, whatever you want to do. Because <laughs> it was like introduce you, like you should introduce yourself. Well, actually, <laughs> actually, yeah. Yeah. Say, I'm, say I'm Tia Tia again, and I'll give it. I'll give it the uh, the thing that we always do. You say it again. Okay. I'm Tia Tia. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> um. Yeah. And so I moved to LA about like four ish years ago, and um. Yeah. Just really came here to be a songwriter. All I wanted to do was write songs and get better at writing songs. Um, I'm originally from New Jersey, and I grew up thinking I wanted to be an actress. And then my mom was like, you're not that great at being an actress, but you write songs all the time, so um, maybe you should focus on that. So yeah, right after high school, I moved to Nashville. I was in Nashville. I went to Belmont for a year um, and really just like, you know, tried, you know, learning how to write songs. I was already doing it, but I wanted to get much better. Um, and then was lucky enough to come out here and, um, yeah, just be, basically write every single day. Um, for different artists and for pitch records um, and I've been like very blessed to have a lot of songs out with artists that I love working with and I look up to and I feel like along that way it's allowed me to become a better writer myself to then put out songs that I'm really proud of and I love um, yeah. and just like Ryan was saying like step more into that like forefront of just like I've always wanted to do this I just wanted to be like good enough to do it before I you know I wanted to like spend my 10,000 hours and more on songwriting so that I can like create music I love really fast and um, be able to do that. And yeah, it's been an amazing year so far. And yeah, it's been really exciting to step yeah, into you, that. You, you guys are really yeah. cranking out the music too. It's like at least the, the last time we talked, you were doing a essentially a song every two weeks, right? Or is it song every week? Every week. Song every every week. week. It'll be like one week Tia Tia, next week Beach Crimes, next week Tia Tia, next week. So it's like each artist is getting two songs a month, which is ludicrous <laughs> in terms of It's crazy. Um, we haven't, like, seen many friends. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's been wild, but it's it's obviously been, like, we're so lucky to see the, you know, see our work paying off, um, Yeah, which is just continuing to be so motivating. And as songwriters, it's like, if you have, you know, five or ten songs come out in a year, that's like an incredible year, like an incredible hit rate to have that happen. And then this year, you know, just putting putting it into our own hands, like we have control of it. And we've just put out like 28 songs so far this year, I think. Yeah. And it's like it's unreal. Like it's so yeah. it's so cool to be able to do that. And obviously everybody has the ability to do that now. And because um, right. as songwriters like, um, you know, Artists aren't putting out albums every year. So, you know, you write so many songs every day. And, like, it's, it's like, so much luck and blessings for it to actually end up on an artist album. Like, go through all the gatekeepers it needs to. Like, yes, yes, yes. Yes, for it to be a single. Like, there's just so many things out of your control once you write the song that need to go right for, like, everything to happen. Um, so it's been really fun to just kind of, like, take back the narrative a little bit this year and just be like, we're going to put it out. We're going to put it out next Friday. We're going to do all this promotion <laughs> around it. And like, um, yeah, just be able to do everything ourselves, which is a lot, but it's, it's, <laughs> right. it's been fun. Yeah. I mean, a, a lot of artists, when I tell them release a song every four to six weeks, they're like, that's way too fast. I can't possibly do it. And it, it obviously depends on what you're, what genre you're doing and what, skill level you have as a as a songwriter and producer and all that but a lot of people that put out music at the pace you guys do are putting out instrumental music or or they're doing uh, hip-hop and they're buying their instrumentals so it's a lot like basically genres where the output can be so much faster but you guys are actually making like i i would say i don't know what to call the genre like electronic pop electro depending on the song some stuff's pop some stuff's like electronic and kind of yeah. everything in between that and usually the higher effort kind of music too so <laughs> if i guess you know everyone out there that's like i i can't output music at this pace it's like well you can because these guys are doing it <laughs> um, <laughs> but also it you're probably if you're if you've only been making music for a year like you it's like 
you guys write music a lot faster because you you have a lot of experience making music and also this is your entire life right now right right totally. yeah which is like we're so lucky that it is yeah to be um, able to go full time into this yeah and also mm-hmm. like I feel like something we're really good at is um, I feel like a lot of times what holds people up in writing is if they get stuck they just like continue trying to like go like just really push for that one thing to happen. And what we're really good at is like, we're always pivoting. So like if something, you know, if we love something, but then it just like gets hard and gets stuck and we don't really know what to do. We just like move on next idea. And like, we'll just like go through ideas like that. Um, And usually the one that like just comes super easy is like the best one anyway um, in our situation. Um, And we've tried a few different ways of like starting the ideas. Cause like, you know, when you're when you're putting out a song every week, it's like you need to know quickly whether it's good or not. <laughs> yeah. Because you yeah. need to like can't afford. Yeah, we can't like, afford yeah. to like make a song and be like, oh damn, it's not that good. Yeah. So we have to like <laughs> put it out within a week. So, yeah. So we're kind of like we we have a few different ways we've been doing it, and we we've been on TikTok Live, and we do these um, we do these hour long TikTok lives where we'll basically make uh, four songs in that hour. So we'll do like 15, we'll, we'll set a 15 minute timer and basically we have to write an entire song from scratch and like produce, try to produce it from scratch. And yeah, it's amazing because it's like after that hour, you're, you've got four ideas and like one of them's bound to be like, okay, at least. And I feel like if you were given that hour to just come up with one idea, you'd come up with one idea and maybe it'd be great. Maybe it wouldn't. Yeah. But if you split it into four 15 minute segments, you then have four ideas and it's like you can, in 15 minutes you can get across like what? the general idea slash vibe of, of where you're going with something. So, um, yeah. a, a few of the songs have from this year have come from that. Yeah. Um, Drive yeah. all day, all night by Beach Crimes and Tia Tia have come yeah. out for that. Um, our next Beach Crimes Tia Tia song is also one we wrote on live. Yeah. And then um, Man Down, one of my releases, is one that we started nice. on live. Yeah. Which is cool. Uh, we have people on there who are, like, throwing out ideas. Like, we're, like, throw out yeah, ideas. Yeah, so like, fun. Like, we make it interactive or, and fun. Yeah. So people aren't just bored yeah. watching us write music. Yeah. <laughs> but, That's yeah. a good idea, having your... Since you have to spend so much time writing music, you can just turn that into content by doing a one-hour live and then now it's like the the fan base is invested in the music a little bit totally. because they feel like they're part of it and they watched it get created um what do you guys have right now on tiktok for like followers and other social media um i have like so you have like 77 yeah, I have like or something 70, 77 000. nice and beach Crimes has like 1500 on tiktok yeah. but like six, we started it new like Beach yeah. Crimes TikTok is, like, a lot newer than mine. Yeah. Um, it's still really good. We have, like, 6,000 on Instagram for Yeah, Beach and Crimes. I have, like, 26,000 almost. Yeah. Nice. And they're, like, kind of, yeah, randomly split across. But yeah. we've we've been focusing on, like, whenever we have a piece of content for either one, which we're posting every single day on both accounts. Um, and we're making, like, their videos ourselves. And, yeah. like, just, like, for YouTube and just, like, really trying to feed, like... You know, yeah. what people might want. But you can yeah. just mirror it across all the platforms, right? It's like you don't need to make, like, specific YouTube short content or whatever. It's like you just post the same video across all four. And, like, it's interesting because we've seen certain videos or certain styles of videos connect on different platforms um, differently. Like some of the Instagram stuff, it's, like, cooler if it's, like, if it looks cool and it's a little bit more um, interesting to, like, actually look at visually and then like youtube shorts is better if it's like kind of a skit or like a reaction video or something yeah so it's just interesting to see how all the platforms react differently um so you have to just post across all of them and like you know something will hit (laughs) yeah yeah how how often are you cranking out content on there like you mentioned posting every day but you guys post every day across all platforms yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah. We actually just discovered this incredible tool called Metricool. Um which is basically it's like one of the only if not the only um like content scheduler that also posts to TikTok. Um and basically ah. so we just like we'll like make a bunch of content, batch the content and then just upload it 
through this um, app Metricool, and it'll just, like, post at whatever time you say every single day so we can, like, program it once for, like, the whole week so we're not, like... Because we right. used to... we This is a new tool we found. We used to, like, be, like, 10 a.m. We'd be, like, wow, we can't, like, post it. I'd be, like, at the gym. I'd be, like, okay. Like, yeah. like it was always, like, such a stressful thing, even though it seems silly that it's, like, stressful, but it would always be, yeah. like, oh, no. Like, yeah. um, Plus, whenever you open one of the apps, you're just bombarded by a super yeah, loud with, like, video in your face and you're trying to, like, get to the post page. Yeah. And it's, like... Yeah. I used to be... I'm, I have such bad, like, ADD vibes where, like, if... I was, like, trying to do this, and Ryan would talk to me. I'd be like, Ryan, I'm so sorry. Like, I actually, like, can't talk to you right now because I will forget the next thing I'm supposed to do. Like, I need to just, like... Yeah. So, um, but this yeah. this app made it really a lot easier for us to just, like, be like, forget about it. Like, yeah. It took a lot of stress it. off our plates. Yeah. Uh, I now think the like scheduling software is super helpful. Like, they can yeah. be... I, I don't know if this one used, like, a free plan or paid plan. I, I've been using something called Later the past few months oh, yeah. which is oh, yeah. like the same same kind of thing um, as yeah, yeah. That's we, awesome. looked, we looked into that one too yeah um, but yeah I mean this site looks yeah. cool yeah, it's got smart links it's got link in bios you can do ads through yeah. it it looks like so um, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Like, I think a lot of artists would solve their social media gripes if they just use something like this because it's nice not having to go on the app to post your content yeah, yeah. I hate like yeah I don't know, taking out my phone and going on to TikTok. Because then you get sucked in, right? And then you have to suck yeah, yourself exactly. out. <laughs> I know. And it's yeah. like, I mean, it's it's like almost a 15-minute process of, like, posting across all of them if you have to do it that way. Yeah. Whereas the And me- the captions are, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. captions are differently or are sometimes different and, like, hashtags depending on which platform you are. So you can actually pre-program it in the app. Like, you can, like, do your template caption with, like, whatever captions fit for all of them, and then you can go in and, like, add whatever ones for, like, TikTok, like, hashtag music talk, or, like, whatever yeah. um, for each different app, which is great. I feel like this isn't turning yeah. into an ad for Metricool, but, like, <laughs> literally, it's the best app ever. So I love it so much. I'm going to have to see so. if I can join their affiliate program before this video goes live. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Exactly. If so, well, yeah, there I will be a link also, in the description. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but, yeah, also, like, you can repurpose it doesn't have to be brand new we try to make it new every time but like you can just repurpose things re-edit them like cut the intro a little bit do different captions um i think there's like a lot like you can basically turn one video into like three videos if you need to and that's three days of content you know um yeah but yeah that's the that's the most important thing for an independent artist and a new artist and even like major label artists, like they, you know, labels now are like just asking their artists to like, to just post more on TikTok because like that's where it all happens. And right, um, yeah, you, you guys have really good content as well, and oh, you, <laughs> and you also use all of your content. Like pretty much your ads are just curated TikTok posts, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. We just use whatever we like whatever content we made for that song, we'll like try it as an ad and just um, try to get in in front of as many people as we can. Yeah. I I think I've used you guys as an example to like at least 10 other artists, FYI. Ah, Nice. (laughs) That's amazing. Someone will be like, what kind of videos are working well right now? And I'll say like performance type content. And then if they're asking, like, oh, like, can you show me something? I'll be like, go on TikTok, ad library, beach crimes, that video of Tia hanging out the back of the car. It's you know. so crazy. It's, that one. That one's so crazy. Did you crushes. say that? It, seven cents. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, if oh, you, yeah. like, this is an ad that's doing like obscenely well, like under ten cents, and like, you know, it's not going to work. It's not like someone can just swap in any song and any person doing that exact style is going to do the same. However, I like the the cool story about that ad, and if if I can, I'll like squeeze it in here somewhere on the on the video. But um, it's like. It's very interesting because the camera angle is hanging out the back of a car, right? So it's visually just kind of interesting. And the sky is like pink, so it's very scroll-stopping. Um, and also, you just look very enthusiastic in that. <laughs> you know, so it's yeah. you look stoked to be hanging out the back of this car. And that yeah. kind of emotion and excitement comes through. And it's a great song, too. You know, it's you guys are literally professional songwriters, so it's, it's like a perfect storm <laughs> of, of things. And... You know, you have other content that's also done well. Like, the, there's a bunch of clips you've done of, like, you're on, like, a cliff or on a hill with the city behind you. And, you know, Ryan, oh, yeah. you're holding a laptop and Tia's got a microphone. And 
And, oh, um, yeah, right. <laughs> no, and that stuff seems like it does really well, too. Yeah, that actually, that's yeah, we haven't done that in a minute, and that stuff actually did really well, so we should yeah, do it again. we sort of found that, like, outdoor content really works, like, outdoor performance stuff, for some reason, like, connects more. Um, and that's something you just figure out by experimenting, you know, like we have a, we have a room in our, in our place that has like a, like a big yeah, seamless like a, wall yeah, seamless. with like really cool lights and stuff. And like, we can yeah. make a lot of cool content there, but like, should be a bedroom, but it's not, it's yeah. our seamless, <laughs> it's our TikTok room. But weirdly, like then, yeah, we go up on Mulholland drive and we like decide to post up for a second and do some like performance videos there. And those are the ones that like connect you know yeah you just like pull over on the side of the road and it's like for some reason like i don't know why but like it it, it has people connected more when you do that kind of stuff yeah yeah I, it kind of makes sense like indoor like outdoors is just more exciting like if you can find a, be- yeah. a beautiful spot it's it's just like it's inherently going to be more interesting because it looks cool you know like if if you were also i didn't even think of this until now but I feel like most people spend their days inside all day. So, like, they're just, like, if they see something outside, like, I always watch it. I don't know. Yeah, I guess you it's, know the, what I it's mean? the same like, mentality of, like, a, like, having a beach as your screensaver or something, you know? Like, or as your yeah. desktop where it's, like, this is, like, kind of where you want to be and it's like, helps you, like, escape um, yeah. to a different <laughs> place. Yeah, that's interesting. Totally. Yeah, and I, I, uh, I've seen people get good results when they go to, like, a like a really cool spot. So not not even just, like, on a hill or something, but... They're they're in like this beautiful beach or something, or they're they're like hanging out in front of like they're on a boat in front of them like a, a island or something, you know, some kind of like thing that's more exotic or just more like interesting or whatever. And like, the moral of the story, like your the more interesting your content is, the better it does. Like right, <laughs> so yeah, exactly. Yeah. I know it's like the we've watched a few of these like Mr. Beast videos where he's talking about like all the things that you know he thinks makes a viral video, and and he's just like he's like it sounds so stupid, but really it's just like how can you make the best possible video? Does this make the video better? Does this make the video better? It's like he's like that's all I think about. That's yeah. the only rule. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, I, the the last uh, video, interview video I filmed like this was with uh, Tamima Shames, who is the founder of Next Step Talent Agency. Um, and oh, okay. so we were talking a bunch about like short form content, social media content, and and like we also had a whole thing where we were just talking about Mr. Beast in that exact same way. Because <laughs> um, yeah, they, her agency or, or uh, yeah agency has like six billion YouTube views across a ton of creators, oh right? So pretty massive numbers. Wow. And that was basically the same exact thing that that she was saying. Like, yeah, you know, it sounds yeah. silly to say, but like, you just you need to make yeah. better videos. <laughs> it's like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and you realize like over the course of time, you're like, we kind of knew this in the back of your head, but it's like hard to know until like you've been through it and then yeah. you look back. But it's like we kind of knew at the beginning like these weren't the best videos, but like they're we just we're just like let's keep doing it. We're getting better at them. And now yeah. you look back and you're like, oh man, the videos we're making now are so much better. And it's but like, like we then, still feel like exactly. We're like, imagine six months from now, yeah. like imagine a year from now, like yeah. you just get better at anything you keep doing. Yeah. So like <laughs> anything you actually just spend keep time doing, doing stuff. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you'll get better at it. And I think it's like the Mr. Beast thing, or you know, from a music perspe- perspective, you can like use a lot of these creators as like inspiration on like what you could do because you know you can content is like not really like a intellectual property in terms of like people just copy each other and they come up with or you or you see a video and you're inspired to make something very similar um but but i've seen a few people and i feel like we kind of were inspired by a few of these like kind of mr beast videos or something about like oh what if we did that but there was like a music component to it you know like or it somehow ended up playing our song at one point and you start to think like creatively about um, about how to make content like that. And, uh, yeah. Well, one thing that stood out to me about you, both of your catalogs, if you will, um, every song you do, ju- like very similar to a, a YouTube video or a short form piece of content, every song is a very clear hook. And I don't mean hook in terms of melody. I mean hook in terms of, like, thing, <clears throat> thing that someone could remember the song is about. 
And, and for example, um, the most clear one I can think of is the song Your Boyfriend Does. Like, it just, it just feels like, it's just like, it can very clearly relate to a specific moment in someone's actual life that they could, like, they're, even if they don't remember the melody, they're going to remember just the lyric, you might not like me, but your boyfriend does, right? And then, you know, so, like, I feel like every, every one of your songs that I've heard across both of your projects, like, there's some kind of very clear, like, story slash message slash, like, hook, you know, which is kind of like a short or, or a TikTok yeah. where you open up a TikTok and it's like, you know, um, I don't know. I, the one I saw recently was like, does, does every couple do this? And it's like, you know, she sleeps on this side of the bed. And so there's like the hook of the video is does every couple do this, right? And it's like yeah. a lot of your songs yeah. kind of have that. And is that is that intentional? Or is that just like you just happen to write songs that are like that? <laughs> yeah. No, I think like... Um, First of all, T is the best lyric writer <laughs> in the world. No. So it's... Uh, no. But that helps. I do love lyrics. But... Um, yeah, I think I think the like the part of songwriting that like I always love so much is, you know, we're all trying to convey most of the time one of two emotions, you know, like like we always joke about this with our friends, but like is it a bad for me or good for me song? Like do we hate him or but we love him or do we like just love or do we like what emotion are we trying to convey? And so it's all about like there's really only a few and like you try to say it in the most unique way that feels um and like when you're writing for yourself that feels like truest to yourself and like um yeah you just try to bring something new to the table um that maybe someone hasn't said yet yeah. so yeah it's definitely on purpose you definitely want like yeah. something that's you know unique it's the same it's storytelling so it's like i could tell you the same story in like five different ways um you know, like, it's just, like, kind of, it's that's, like, kind of what songwriting is, I guess. Yeah. And to um, make it, like, a conversational as yeah, well. Yeah, conversational. Like, and like, like, not too, like, heady or, like, spacey, even though that stuff's great, too. But I feel like Tia's just really good at making things that are conversational that, like, you've <laughs> kind of heard before, but maybe not exactly the or way you felt she before. says it. Yeah, exactly. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, I, but yeah, I, I know so someone I else think, who's yeah. big into this kind of songwriting i guess or, or storytelling and music and every time he has a song he's like this is my like wedding dance song or he's like this is my this yeah. is my song for new parents or this is my song for this and like every song is like he writes it and designs it in a way where he's like reflecting on on his life so he's like if if i wanted to write myself that me and my wife could have like danced to at our first wedding what would it be but now it's like that song for everyone else or he writes a song that's inspired by the birth i, I hope his I hope his content is exactly what you're saying because that's a, like that's the best hook of an opening like video yeah. ever <laughs> is that exact thing and that's like a perfect series of like how to promote his music. I talk to him just every Wednesday, so I'll let, let him know. Make sure he's <laughs> telling. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, so I think he's been, he's been on kind of like a break on their music for a bit, but they've they're like super active in like songwritingy stuff. Less so as an artist recently, but. Yeah, it's like the same kind of thing, though. It's like you are you have all these hooks that you're putting in either social media or music, and it's like they can kind of work in, in both, right? Like if your song is about, you know, you might not like me, but your boyfriend does. It's like show this to your, um, you know, show this to, like POV, you show this video to your boyfriend's ex or whatever, right? And then yeah. like, yeah. that's the hook of the video, but it's inspired by the message of the song. Um, and not every yeah. not every yeah. song's like that. Like I don't know if you know the band Tool, but like <laughs> yeah, of course, they're a massive band, and their lyrics are you know completely different ballpark, right? Like different songwriting style, different lyrical thing. They're going for abstract, and you know, so it doesn't always have to be this. But no, of course, pop, yeah, yeah, we're just yeah. You know, I feel like pop has to be like this. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's like all. There's all, like, different versions, I feel like. There could be, like, less storytelling. It all is, like, it's all conveying a feeling that normally comes from, like, yeah, you wanna that ev- place. Of, and you want to evoke that emotion out yeah. of somebody. When yeah. they listen to it, you want them to feel, like, what you are feeling. Or yeah. what you felt when you were writing it. Yeah. And or what you want. Like, sometimes we'll, like, go into the studio and, like, this is what I want. I want to make something that I want to listen to when I'm 
Like, I want to make something feeling like my most confident self. So when I'm not feeling like that, I can listen to this and it'll bring me there. You know, yeah. like, um, yeah. stuff like that, which I think is cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it's interesting when you said like the hooks for like social media versus the hooks for music. And it's like, there's a, there is like actually an overlap of them as well. You know, like some people do think like that when they're writing music these days, it's like, how is this going to translate on social media? Because really like the best promotion of the song is going to be a 15 minute, 15 second clip of the song. So like, what are those 15 seconds going to be in the song? And like, I feel like we don't usually think like that yeah, while we're we writing, but we kind of have a few times maybe, or thought about yeah. like, that would be really cool in a video. Yeah. Well, it'll be more of like, I feel like writing for a platform is just kind of like, can sometimes feel uninspiring or yeah. you won't get something that's like you actually will love for a long time. But like, yeah, we definitely feel like when we're writing songs, like whether it's like ad libs that are funny and it'd be funny to like make a video where we're popping out being like, yeah, or like something like yeah. that. Like that's, we will think of those things for sure. Or, um, yeah. yeah. And there's examples of other people who do that kind of stuff as well. Like yeah. Connor Price, who's one of the biggest, like, you know, new artists on the scene yeah. in the last year is like, incredible at content like skit kind of related content and they like they'll sometimes think about like what would be a funny video and they're like he, he had some example of like he's like it'd be really funny if we were like playing a carrot flute in the yeah. video. so then they were like okay let's like think backwards from that like okay the song needs to have like a very prominent flute line as like part of the beat just so smart. Yeah. yeah, so then they go They're and they, so they tell, like, their producer Connor, to go Nikki find... So smart. Yeah, to go find, you know, five different flute loops. Yeah. And then... <laughs> flute loops. Flute loops. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and then just, like, build a beat around that, and then they make the song, and then the video is, like, incredible yeah. because it's, like, based around this. They thought yeah. about the video before they made the track for the song, and it's, like... That's that's another level, yeah, but it works great. for them, you know. And it's it's an it's a really smart way of of making music in the current landscape. A lot of YouTubers yeah. talk about this, especially Mr. Beast. Is he thinks about the a lot of like a lot of musicians, a lot of YouTubers will will make their video, make their song, and then afterwards figure out how it's going to be packaged and how it's going to be marketed. But like Mr. Beast and other like you know creators that teach YouTube which I obviously watch a lot of because I'm a YouTuber. <laughs> um, but they yeah. talk about how one really good strategy that helps a lot of creators is to, before you even film your video or do any work on it, think about what the thumbnail is going to be and the title and basically, like, how is it going to be packaged? Because if you can't package it, no one's going to click on it and watch it. And for music, as much as it sucks to say, like, that definitely happens. You could, you could have the best song in the world, but if it's like no one listens to it, it doesn't doesn't matter and it's obviously not exactly apples to apples because people aren't looking at your artwork and title the same way they look at a title and thumbnail on youtube but um in social media land a lot of that happens if your social media content sucks or your ads suck yeah. no one's gonna watch it yeah 100 percent. and yeah we feel that way like um we feel like we have songs that have come out and we just hadn't figured out the best way to package them or promote them um so we're constantly trying to think of like new ways to like show people this music because, you know, especially when we first started doing this, like we essentially started from zero in January um, for both projects. And um, yeah, it just like we're I feel like we're still thinking that like I feel like we've gotten better at it, but there's definitely songs that but when before we were better at it, we we're just like, yeah. we got to revive these songs because otherwise yeah. no one's going to hear them. But they're so good. Yeah. And I mean, there's there's so many examples of even like major artists where it's like the song wasn't like about damn time Lizzo. It's like they put that song out and it like did OK and then just was like kind of falling off. And then like I think those two those two girls did a did like a dance video to it to like the second verse of it, like a little piece of the second verse. And it went fully viral. The song's like starts blowing up. It's number one on all platforms on like Spotify, Hot 100, yeah. like a month later, and then wins a Grammy. It's like all that stemmed from this one video. Like it's crazy how much something can happen yeah. if you nail the content for it. Yeah. You know? And like that wasn't even her 
doing it. It was like somebody else did it. Yeah. Which is crazy. Yeah, yeah. So you you guys are a completely different note, um, kind of pivoting topics. You guys have gotten a lot of yeah. really cool collabs, or at least on Tia's releases. I don't know if it's also happened in Beach Crime releases. But like you, uh, on Tia's, there's a um, Pao Fu collab track, right? And then recently I saw there's a, I don't know how to say this guy's name because I don't know him, but Audian and then William Black collab. Audian. Audian? Yeah, Audian. And so yeah. I, I looked at them and they're pretty pretty big, right? I mean, uh, Pao Fu is obviously huge, yeah. but then Audian has yeah. 2.2 million monthly listeners. How do you guys nail collabs like that? Yeah, I think, I mean, I think this comes back to just, like, the songwriting world. Um, Because actually for those two features and specifically, we wrote them before I think I was even putting out music. Yeah. Um, And so you would write a song and pitch it. And we actually, the Pao Fu song came together, like, literally right as... um, his biggest song was like blowing up on TikTok. Yeah. And this Deathbed. was like, yeah, Deathbed. And this was like his, gonna be his follow up single um, over co- like quarantine. Yeah. And, um, yeah. and yeah, and then when I was like, and my voice was, my vocal was gonna be kept on both of these songs. And so then when I was like, wanted to do my own music, I was like, well, definitely staying on the, these <laughs> songs this is amazing because I love them so much. And, um, yeah, I love the song so much. It's so cool to collab with such like awesome artists, and yeah. um, you know, Pao Fu so nice, and Audience so nice. I got to come out with him um, when he recently played the Torch in LA, which was such an incredible experience. It was like in front of ten thousand people, so it was like really amazing <laughs> that he had me out there to sing with him, um, and that it, yeah, it was really exciting. So yeah, it's just it comes from like those kind of things. I feel like. Um, We've definitely started from, like, ground zero for both projects, um, basically doing everything just the two of yeah. us. Um, but, and, like, I feel like being a songwriter hasn't helped, like, those, it wouldn't, it hasn't helped us in the way of you think of, like, oh, you have so many connections. Like, it actually, it's really, like, starting your own path and, like, starting from scratch in a lot of ways. Um, but for, like, things like that, it's, like, amazing because we wrote these songs for them. And then I was able to stay on it, which was which was awesome. Yeah. Um, and so we definitely are looking to collab more um, with different artists in the future. Um, I think this year it's just um, I don't know. I feel like Beach Crimes we have maybe a couple of features in the works, but yeah. um, for our album we're trying to keep it just the just Beach Crimes for now, yeah. featuring TTF. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's and, a, uh, it's a powerful yeah. setup you guys have because you're you're both on all of the tracks, right? Like yeah. I, I pulled up e- even the Pao Fu song and Ryan, you're one of the songwriters on it. And like, you know, on, so yeah, you guys yeah. are both doing all of this stuff. It's just like they're being packaged under different brands but when they make sense and all that. Um, but you can kind of play yeah, off of totally. each of those. Whereas if, if one of them takes off more than the other, it's like you're, you're releasing these songs as multiple primary artists. And if one blows up, you can kind of take the other along for the ride and you're both doing both anyway. So it's, Exactly. Exactly. That's exactly what we thought. What and right thinking. now, like, <clears throat> our song Do It Better um, has really just, like, taken a life of its own and has, like, over 200,000 TikToks created to it. And on Reels, I think it has, like, almost 100,000. It might already have 100,000 today. I haven't yeah. checked this morning yet. Um, Reels Create, created to it. Like, people are just making created. videos. Just... Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> and TikToks created. <laughs> 270,000 yeah. TikToks created. Oh, Which is like, I don't even understand that. I, it doesn't like, make any yeah. sense. But it's really cool because um, Beach Crimes and Tia Tia are both, you know, main artists on the song. So it's yeah. like, we get to build both at the same time. It's, you yeah, know, gotta be honest, a song like, that we've loved When for, you said 100,000 created, that blew my fucking mind. <laughs> like, it's just... <laughs> It's like that's a, that's it's, infinitely different than a hundred thousand streams. Like that's a hundred thousand people grabbed oh yeah. your song oh yeah. and made a video on social media with it. And each I of know. those yeah. people, it's posts, like, like imagine if each of those posts got a hundred views, right? That's ten yeah. million views of your song for free. Yeah, bonkers. It's crazy. <laughs> Some of them have like millions of views, which is like insane. Yeah, crazy. Um, but yeah, do it better. Is that like over a million, like thirteen 
1.3 million streams on Spotify and like um which is literally just it's just crazy. <laughs> it's doing it's doing well. It's doing good. It's starting to go radio doing good. to radio in the UK now. So we're like we're starting to see this is like the first thing that's really like I don't know, connecting outside of our control, yeah. like in yeah. a weird way where we're like, we don't really know what's happening, but we're down. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You'll definitely take it. Let's, Let's go. go. Let's go. <laughs> so <laughs> on the songwriting front, you, you guys have gotten to work with some amazing artists and release some crazy songs. What was like starting into this world like? Like at some point you two were just sing, like songwriters with zero credits you had your own music, but you'd never worked with any artist, never mind like a big artist. Like what was the entry gate into that? And like, how could someone else get into this world of, of songwriting? Yeah. I mean, it was really different for both of yeah, us. I'll quickly, stories. I'll quickly say what happened for me. Um, um, basically I was in, so I had moved to Nashville right after high school and, um, it's a really small town there, which is really amazing because there's a lot of events. And like, it, if you're just like, I basically just hustled. You have to just hustle. It's like this whole, this whole thing is a hustle, um, forever probably. But, um, yeah, I would just go to as many like songwriting events or like, you know, shows as possible. And like, I would do like my Instagram stalking to be like, oh, that guy works at like that label or like, oh, that person's like connected to this person and like just try to meet as many people as I could and like also not ask them for anything but time, like just be like, can I buy you a coffee? Um, and then, you know, it's all about relationships. And so if you're able to meet people and like actually like know them and like care about them, they're way more likely to be like, oh, yeah, like. I love to listen to your music yeah. or something rather than people get asked things all the time. Like, um, so it's really just like, you know, trying to make as many friends as you can really. Um, and then, yeah, I was just like learning how to write songs in Nashville. Basically had no cuts, just like writing every day with whoever would work with me. Um, landed a few songs randomly that were going to be on, um, like a dance artist record. And so, um, they're going to be with Robin Schultz. Mm. And so, then everyone in Nashville was like, here's a publishing deal. But I was like, no, I was like, I don't want one now. Like, whatever. And then I was sitting in deals, um, like deal meetings. And I was like, just randomly one day, just like literally lied. and was like, I'm going to L.A. next week. Like, if you can introduce me to your L.A. team, then like we can continue talking. And literally just like had no plans to go to L.A. I've never been to L.A. before. Um, basically just they were all able to set me up with meetings in LA. So I was like, all right. I was like, mom, we have to go to LA <laughs> like <laughs> next week. Tickets were like, obviously so expensive by them. So last minute it was so stupid, but we went, I met with a bunch of people, um, had a really great experience, ended up signing a deal with Sony in LA to Nick Brawl and Sony, which was awesome. And, um, me and Nick, he was an, like an A&R and he was, we were coming up together. And so like, he would get a great session for me. I would like go in and try to kill it. And then we would just like keep compounding off that. Um, and then was able to get some cuts with, um, some artists and uh, that's how it all starts. And like getting in the room with people, like, even if you don't write like a hit that day, yeah. like if they can tell that you're a good writer and that you're a good vibe, they, you know, we, no one writes a hit every single day. So we'll just like, we'll get back in together. Um, yeah, and then I found my amazing team at Nonstop Management um, with Jamie and Cash and every the whole team. Carolyn Love. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out Shout every out. single person on your <laughs> on team. On my team, I love them so much. Yeah. And Audrey, I love everyone. Um, like and a, like a speech. <laughs> and then, like you just yeah, won an Oscar or something. And then, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah. But yeah, they just helped elevate me and put me in great sessions. And then I was able to expand that. And now I'm with Warren Chapel and Nonstop. And yeah. Yeah. I'd yeah. say that's well, my, Ryan, that's my I story. Ryan, I guess you got a top yeah. of that. So what's, what's I, your I story? Can't. I truly can't. Mine's not, mine's not as exciting. This is so much better. Oh, <laughs> no, my God. Not. Yeah, it's it is. Not. But I guess I'll try to do a really short version of it. So basically, I went to uh, an econ accounting school for college and was just like, made music in my free time, left, and I was working for an investment bank and like an investment management firm for like two years. And I would come home every day and just try to work on music. And I had a friend who, um, two friends who I grew up in LA with, um, who were kind of trying to do the same thing also sort of in their free time. So we'd kind of link up 
and make music from like 6 p.m. to like 1 a.m. every night and just like not sleep at all. And then on the weekends work and and just try to get better at making music. And this was like this was like two years probably of doing that um, and just trying to get better and better. And the songs were still trash. Like the first like 400 songs I wrote were bad, like really bad. Wait, did and you work with Big Time Rush? No, I never, I think we had a song that almost came uh, out with them. We had a lot of like almost <laughs> songs. Like we had a song on hold for Kelly Clarkson and then it was like nothing happened. But we basically like, we had, I think we had like one connection to like some guy who worked at Disney Records. And so we would just like pitch as much as we could to him. Like we'd make a song and send it to him. And one of them like got cut by a Disney artist, never ended up coming out. And this was just happening for a while. And it was like, but we didn't really care. We were just like, we knew it wasn't that good yet. And we just loved what we were doing and we were just trying to get better. And then eventually um, I got connected with, um, you know, if you're, if you're a producer and you have the ability to like record stuff and make stuff sound like, okay, you can usually connect with artists who don't know how to record themselves or who are, you know, much used, more used to just playing in a band or just on guitar and writing songs. And they don't know how to like record their own vocals and make them sound good. Although I think that's just much easier to figure out these days. Um, back in the day, it was like, you know, harder, harder to do that. So yeah. there was a band called Small Pools who I met um, at that time, like probably 2013 and or 2012. And I just started like making songs with them. And we made, we basically made an entire album together and they ended up getting signed to Warner Brothers. And so through that, like one of the songs went to radio and it was like, oh, amazing. Like this is my moment and you know the song didn't end up like connecting like crazy on radio but like it got me in the door with you know publishing people like which is similar to Tia's story where like you start to meet some publishing people um like publishing companies basically essentially will give you an advance on your royalties so they'll basically like the standard co-publishing deal is like you know they'll give you anywhere from like 40,000 to like a hundred thousand dollars up front. And then you have to make, you're then in the hole, you're in debt to them essentially. And you pay them back with your royalties and they get like 25% of your royalties until you're out of your deal, which might be a three year deal or whatever. Um, but it will extend until you're, uh, until you're actually recruited on that money. So basically as a songwriter, when you're coming up, like that's kind of like the Holy grail because it allows you to like quit your day job usually and be like, I can now go full time. And so that was what I did at that point. It was like, okay, sweet. Like I'm, I'm done now. I can, I can go full time. Like, and this gives me like two years probably where I can like just do music. And then it was just little things here and there. And eventually a a couple big things. And then, we ended up uh, where we are today. Couple big things. Have you watched Up and Dance? <laughs> Biggest song of the year. ASCAP song of the year. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I can't think of a single yeah, person was... in the world that, that doesn't know that. That's oh, I mean, a whole bunch of songs you guys have done too. But I mean, honestly, that's a pretty badass story. <laughs> I mean, it's there's obviously a lot of like waiting in there, right? Like you told that story in a couple minutes, but that story was like a decade of your life, right? <laughs> totally yeah exactly i think that's the thing to remember too like there's been so many times where i'm like oh this is the moment and then it's not but i think honestly i feel like i feel like god and the universe gives you those moments to keep going like because it really like it is all about like keeping the enthusiasm and keeping the drive and like i feel like those little like nuggets along the way that even if they don't like they fall through or whatever it like keeps you on the right path like makes you be like i'm on the right path i'm almost there and like the truth is like you're never closer to your dreams than today you know like you're closer than you were yesterday and you'll be closer tomorrow so it's just like really remembering that and like just not giving up i think that's the biggest thing is like not giving up and just like always trying to get better and like admitting if you're not you know, I feel like that's the thing that holds up a lot of people when they try to start writing is they just think they're already the best. And it's like you have to, like, have a false sense of, like, 
confidence that like you're great but like also you have to have that will and like drive to try to get better yeah. um, I, I found that the yeah. bigger an artist I talk to the more humble they are about their music and the people that are their most cocky about their music usually have the worst music <laughs> like they're, they're, I, I've talked you know <laughs> most mo- like 99% of the people that I've talked to and, and calls and stuff are like amazing but every so often I get someone that's like, oh, I got some real, I got some real awesome stuff coming out. I think it's like some of the best music you'll ever hear. I listen to it. And I'm like, I would give this like a five out of 10, <laughs> like, or, or maybe like less or whatever. <laughs> and then like, I, I talk to someone who's like super successful. They've been doing this for decades and, and like, they're just super humble about it. Cause they're like, oh, you know, I feel like, you know, I could, it could be better or my, you know, the, I'm always, the stuff I'm working on now is like, you know, it's way better than that. They're always kind of trying to push to the next level. And I think that's kind of what makes them, that's why they're successful is because they're always trying to get better yeah. and, and push the boundaries. Yeah. I would say that's most, yeah, most successful musicians. Or just yeah. people. In or life. people, yeah. In any any field, it's really. like knowing that you can be better, and like having a drive to get better all the time, and learn more, and like improve all right. the time. It's the biggest thing, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So, new new kid wants to get into this world of songwriting. <laughs> um, basically, moral of the story: yeah. put your head down, work, write a bunch of awesome music, but at some point along the line. You, I, in, in Tia's journey, it was networking, like, to death. Like, hit, hooking up with people, making relationships, not asking them for things, but just writing music with them, et cetera. And then, Ryan, your journey was, you, you, you come from more of the producer-ish background, as well as the songwriting. So you were able to work with local bands, and, you know, when one of them had a break, you, you since you wrote with them and worked with them, you got, you got some opportunities that then you could just leverage further. So... It's two completely totally. different paths. Yes. And I think two yeah. completely different paths, but also like collaboration was such a big part of both of them, I think. Like writing with other people and learning from them and getting better. And uh, I remember someone said this to me like early on was like, you should, you never want to be the best person in the room. Yeah. Because that means you're writing, like, you always want to be writing with someone where you're like, wow, like, damn, I would have never said that like that. Or like, always trying to learn at least one thing. Like, even on a day where you're like, damn, I'm so much better than these people. Like, there's always something that they're doing differently or they're thinking of differently that you can take and learn from, like, when you're coming up then. Or, like, even still today, like, I'm so, like, in awe of, like, all of our friends. Um, Everyone's so talented. And you want to always feel like that. You want to always, like, be in rooms. Like, if you're the if you're in a room and you're like, I could have done this without any of these people... Like, get in yeah. a different room then. Get in a room that's going to push you to write something, like, better and, like, different than you would do by yourself. Um, yeah. If you look at the credits on, like, the top 40 songs right now, like, they're almost all multiple yeah. writers, you know? Because, like, that is, you sort of need other people to, like, help you out and make things better and push you to be better. Yeah. And so I think that's a big thing that I would tell people is, like, mm-hmm. to find people that you like to work with. It doesn't have to be, like, a big room. Like, we do yeah. all of our stuff just together. And, like, but we also, like, are really fortunate and, like, we work really well together and we are very comfortable enough to be, like, that's not good enough or, like, let's rethink this whole thing. Like, I feel like that having that trust and having that, like, open sense of communication yeah. um, is just, like, really, like, such a blessing. Yeah. Um, and also, I think a lot of people sometimes want who are who are coming up right now are just like how do i get my song to justin bieber or something you know like and that's not really the right mentality i think like nowadays i think it's more like find someone who's also on the come up right now who's an artist that is a you know great singer or a great band or a great musician and or a great writer and you just believe in them and like link with them and just make the best thing you can possibly make like ever more than ever it's like brand new artists are like taking off every year it's yeah. like a new person you've never heard of who you know made the music with this person who they make all their music with like they're popping off yeah. right now you know it's like and so that's that is what i would give as my yeah. advice probably to, I to new, yeah to new people um 
coming up. Yeah, yeah. I think that's great advice. I mean, even even when I met you guys, I, I don't remember exactly when it was, you were like 10, to- 10 times smaller than you are now or something on, on streaming services. And you had like 10 yeah. times less songs. Than yeah, I, I had like 10,000. Yeah, I had like two songs out, three songs out. And I had like, I think it was like 18,000 monthly right. listeners. Yeah, and Beach Crimes had zero. And that was <laughs> zero. Yeah, Beach January. Crimes had zero. And I had 18,000, but it was really just because of my feature yeah, with yeah. Pafu. Like, so that was like it. If, <laughs> Like, if someone had, bad. let's say, started collabing with you back in January or February or something, like, they they would, not by, like, trying to milk your relationship or anything, just by, like, working with you, they would be in a much better position today because they would have, like, believed in your journey and just kind of gotten a little boost along for the ride, right? And you're kind of a perfect example. Yeah. If, if someone saw in you where you would be seven months in the future and you were willing to work with them. So it'd be pretty pretty great for them, you know? <laughs> so yeah. best, The best thing is growing with people. And, like, even in, like, if you find, like, where I'm saying, like, find some songwriters that you can work with, producers, and, like, come up together because that's the way that, like, you'll really win. And then when all your friends are winning, then you're all you're working with your friends every day. That's, like, the yeah. best yeah. best case scenario. Exactly. So, you I know. mean, like, on the highest level obviously it's like Phineas and Billie Eilish you know like yeah they had neither neither of them had ever done anything and like Phineas did all the Billie stuff and then it's like once that stuff starts popping off it's like every major pop artist that he could ever want to work with is at his door like hitting up his phone every day like yeah. how can yeah. I work with you you know what I mean so like that's the perfect example of just like someone who like you know, you develop a, one artist and you just make it the best thing you can possibly make it. And then all of the other stuff that you wanted to do before, which is like, get a song with Justin Bieber, get a song with Selena Gomez. It's like, that's what, that's how it, it can happen the yeah. best way. I yeah. Think, and I the feel like that's way. the, yeah. It's like, you can, skip, every world. <laughs> yeah, you can <laughs> skip all of the like middle sections that you would need to go if you were just like writing trying to write your way there with like yeah. pitch songs right, or something. Right. Um, so we've been going for, for about an hour now. What do you want to leave people with? Nice. Like what, what is your kind of final words of wisdom or is there a sudden certain place that they can go and follow you or keep tabs on or learn from you even? Yeah. Stream Tia Tia and Beach <laughs> Crimes. Um, my Instagram is Tia Tia and Beach Crimes is Beach Crimes dot MP3. Ryan McMahon is Ryan McMahon, the real one, on Instagram. Yeah, which um, looks like Ryan McMahon there alone. The real <laughs> one is the same as there alone. So everyone thought he was everyone, starting a like an yeah. indie emo band. <laughs> yeah. So it's the real one, I nice. promise. Um, but yeah, I think, I think. Uh, yeah, I hope this is helpful. Yeah, I feel like, like I think just like. If you really, really want to do this and you're watching this, like, just never give up. Just never give up and just, like, write a new song every single day, make connections, and, you know, keep your head down and it'll happen. Yeah. It's all, like, there's nobody who's been trying to do this super, super hard for, like, 10 years who (laughs) didn't make it. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) It's, like, if you just actually, like, are true to yourself and, like, did you work as hard as you possibly could to make your dreams come true. Like that's what it all comes down to. Like even the people we call like geniuses, like it's like you actually look at their like Ed Sheeran or like, you know, behind the scenes, like Max Martin or all these people. It's like, if you actually hear they're geniuses, right? Like, but if you actually see, hear their stories from the beginning, it's like they worked harder than anybody. They put in like 30,000 hours before any of that stuff. Like Ed Sheeran talks about, he wrote like, I think he wrote like almost a thousand songs before he, before he had one. When I I saw him live, he he was telling a story about how he played live every week in his local bar and and no one, like there was no one there. Like there'd be a couple people there, but they were there to drink and eat and they didn't care about the guy on stage. And every week he would come with a new song and be like, this is the song that's going to get people to actually pay attention to me. It's like Ed Sheeran, right? And... And, um, you know, he was yeah. a kid. I think he was, he said he was 14 or 15 then, and he was playing this, this, this restaurant every week or whatever. But 
then it, it wasn't until he wrote that song A Team that actually like popped off and got him yeah. like, a record deal and changed everything and then he's just working yeah. with all these other artists writing songs and but like he, he had put in a lot of work and if you hear there's this awesome interview yeah. we did with who's the radio guy Howard Stern Howard Stern where he shows him one yeah. of his old songs when he was 15 which was only two years before 18 and his vocals were horrible wow. like absolutely dreadful and then yeah. you hear two years later, his voice is like yeah. the next gift from God, right? And so he's talking about like in, in this yeah. like two to three year period of just practicing your ass off, you can go from like what someone would consider a really, really bad singer to what someone would consider one of the best singers ever. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. Exactly. And it's, yeah. And you can see, yeah, it's a, it's a per, that's a perfect, yeah, example it's a perfect example of just like, this is where it was. And this is where it is now. Yeah. All that is in between that is an insane amount of yeah. hard work and not giving up. And so that's like, that's the best advice. I think. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. 